the medium of film is a very powerful medium. I mean, the words by Steve Biko, which I always quote in workshops, when he said, uh, so much has been said so often to us, for us, and about us, but very seldom by us. To a certain extent, as a storyteller, as a filmmaker, you almost don't have a choice, especially this kind of what I see as first generation of new black directors. It's almost like the stories have already chosen you. The kind of films you're going to make, they've already chosen you. You have to follow a certain path. Just like me, they had already been used to 16 millimeter projectionists coming to the schools, showing them westerns, showing them Chinese martial arts films, uh, as well as a lot of Hollywood uh, material, the Chuck Norris and so and so. And when we got in with that uh, material, I mean, I remember walking in with your Steve Biko black and proud t-shirt, engaging the students in that sort of uh, consciousness. And you realize that their eyes sort of opened up and they thought, wow, there's this sort of material that is available. The challenge, therefore, is to provide more of these stories is to reach a level of critical mass where we don't have one feature film per year or two good television dockies produced per year or three. There must be a critical mass of volume that allows ongoing exposure. They've come up with a whole new way of offering people opportunity to see cinema. It's not about just people coming to the space to watch, but it's also about the distributor going up there and saying, we're gonna you know, put up a film for you, you can watch it, interact with the, with the film. For me, that's like incredible. It's, it's completely radical way. And I also, it, it, those were some of the things that I started thinking of when I, started, when I was making films, saying, who's gonna see my film? It's just like a kind of a very frustrating question for a filmmaker to ask. You know, portrait before Fruit to get up was seen more by people outside this country, um, and which was kind of always been a sad thing for me that you know I made this film for this country, but it has never been seen in this country. And then, since Fruit has come on board, they really kind of took upon themselves to make it, you know, to take it out there for people to see it. The film only as good as the number of people who see it. The end goal characterized by critical mass. Getting films out there for people to see defines what many independent African and South African filmmakers recognize that Fru does best. Adopting a total approach to distribution centered on a strategy of new audience development, targeting communities historically ignored by mainstream distributors, the Fru operation is made up of some seven program initiatives. The most celebrated of these being the Mobile Video Van Education Project, targeting marginalized rural audiences. These vans are driven by people that are committed, that understand the power of the medium. Um, and they show films in close collaboration with um, grassroots organizations. Through the Mobile Van Project, we reach approximately 60 to 70,000 people a year and um, hopefully we will want to expand this project to have a van in each province in the next three years. The first thing would be to go into community and assess the needs. What needs are there? And then from there then is then that you I'll start actually with my work. This is different like a city situation where you find that well there are civic structures. Here actually you have to start by meeting the Amakosis and the Indunas and then tell them who you are, where you're coming from and what work you do. Then you'll be allowed to work. Poverty, cholera, illiteracy and the lack of HIV and AIDS awareness best define the community needs around which Moss has structured Fru's mobile rural intervention in KwaZulu-Natal. A lot of people are dying in this area due to HIV, AIDS diseases. And, uh, we, the community hasn't got uh, good water for drinking. They don't get uh, education. Nobody tells them how to avoid these things. 
on the, like this project, that's where they get the information or when they go to the clinics, that's where they get educated. The project, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's excellent. It's helping the community a lot uh, because uh, the youth, they've seen uh, how these uh, diseases or these viruses how the people are dying and uh, how, dangerous, uh, how dangerous it is, and uh, it can help them a lot. The first strategy would be to find out as to how many NGOs and how many CBOs and how many environmental activists that are doing similar work. So as I come to see them, I'm already prepared with all kind of films that I think they're gonna be selecting from. In South Africa, roughly 58% of the population do not have access to local television. In this region, most do not even have electricity, and there is virtually no entertainment. Film shows are popular events, and an ideal opportunity to educate while entertaining. The primary focus of Moss's work is HIV and AIDS awareness. Other community-specific issues follow. For this region, characterized by indigenous forests, screenings focusing on conservation and degradation of the environment. We have a lot of forests in this area. So one of the things that actually came up when I was in one of the villages around here was actually the concern about chopping of trees by the communities. And then they were even mentioning indigenous trees as to other trees that actually kills the indigenous trees as to what can they do to tackle the problem. Illiteracy rates are very high in this province. So the involvement of a film resource unit as such as a, an NGO, that partnership which uh, we have formed, it has uh, aided our department quite a lot in getting a message across to communities out there. And as far as I understand where they have conducted or ran workshops of this nature, people are so eager to have more of these activities taking place in their, in their places or in their areas because uh, there is a lot that they are learning from, uh, from this program. We're very interested in seeing art and culture become a part of the development world we think it is. And for people to see themselves, these facilities have to be taken to them. It's how we create access. And so we think it's important for FRU to be able to run mobile video units that show people films about Senegal from filmmakers in Mozambique, from filmmakers here in South Africa, and that people in rural areas have as much access as people in urban areas, because this, again, we want people, all people, to be able to know about themselves and see about themselves and to experience that imaginary of film. And at the end of the day, to those who listen, they will learn a lot. A lot that is going to help them in their studies and a lot that is going to improve their lives even after their schooling in the school. And uh, perhaps if you noted how attentive they were and uh, the first showing was on music when they saw you, Masigela, when they saw Jabu Kanyile, it was somehow like a film show to them. Something like this on a big screen, something lively, something that they can relate to. It's something like the world brought back to the class. <laughs> the children around here are passed. Some are staying far downwards there in the really rural environment where parents are responsible for the damage we saw on the forest. I think what they've seen here 
they know what they know it and today they were able to learn of the hazards that causes to the environment the workshops that we have run have had a great impact on people they said even the community themselves can have a lot of a changed attitude based on what they've seen from this tree of life because they saw that the problems that are taking place in environment actually is from their bad uh, management uh, their bad use of the natural resources <laughs> I like to watch Philips, especially when I learn, because it's easy to learn something that you see than to learn something that you are told about. It's easy to forget that thing, but it's not easy to forget something that you, 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 you learn by seeing it, yes. We reach between 10 and 12 million people every year. The programs we have in place are in line with national priorities and objectives. Programs that deal with issues that have been identified by government as important. Through the establishment of 14 community-based video resource centers, in excess of 600 progressive documentary, educational and feature film titles are further made accessible by FRU to new audiences countrywide providing screening facilities and training for community-based video operators. These resource centers will be installed in the 50 community-based multi-purpose centers planned by government for completion countrywide by the end of this year. To promote consciousness around film education, FRU has partnered with the MTN Art Institute, who run visual literacy workshops, drawing on their corporate art collection and structured film and video appreciation programs designed in collaboration with FRU. At New Metro Theatres in Gauteng, school children and educators are bussed in to participate in the National Curricula and African View screening programs, a joint project set up by FRU and Jonic Film Education to introduce film education to all school-going children in South Africa. Ultimately, we would like to see a situation where the Department of Education adopts film literacy, visual literacy as a curriculum-based course for learners. Uh, and then we'll be able to uh, truly uh, be able to see a, a new body of people, youth, talent, engage in film in this country. After five years field working the Video Van project, Moss knows well enough that in this environment, between politics and rural protocol, things can become complicated. This evening, for example, arriving to set up for a scheduled AIDS awareness community screening, only to find that the hall has been locked on orders from Chief Zulu. Now, they say now that the chief is not happy about actually the announcement to the people. So he says another day should be actually looked at. But now the problem is that well, the Induna, as we spoke yesterday, he's not actually having this message. Induna Gwala, who holds the keys to the hall and through whom Moss has always liaised, can offer no explanation. The Induna says I must go and see the chief myself and then explain to him. Sitting down with Chief Zulu, it seems that Nduna Gwala has effectively resigned his position, and so now, according to protocol, Moss's request for a community screening must be channeled through the other Indunas serving Chief Zulu's council, which means a postponement of several weeks. Frustrated but respecting the Chief's decision, Moss is nevertheless determined to somehow ensure that the show does go on. work that, are, that I'm doing with user user portrait of young men drowning, I think for me it's kind of almost a reaction to the kind of film or television that I grew up watching. It was, uh, uh, to a certain extent, those programs or dramas were not portraying the worlds that I was familiar with. 
and in my environment, people were grasping with things that were much deeper, much harsher realities of life. And I guess to a certain extent, when I had an opportunity to do user user, those were some of the things that you know I thought we, we should you know we have to introduce. It has to feel real, especially to the audiences that uh, we are targeting, which is young people. I think you had to paint a universe that they can believe in. Shakes. Don't fly. We are inviting everybody here in Foster Us to come there and take to Money Hall, extension 14, for a free movie on a big screen. And the movie deals with HIV and AIDS. And the movie is called Yellow Card. New audience yes, development through Township Exhibition plays an important role in cultivating South African audiences in the appreciation of African and South African film material, thereby growing an audience market for independent South African filmmakers in communities historically ignored by mainstream cinema organizations and who today still have no local access to commercial cinemas. This Fru Township screening was set up in conjunction with Movement 76, a Johannesburg inner-city community-based arts and culture youth movement with aspirant young filmmakers in its ranks. The whole issue of developing an audience for the appreciation, as far as we're concerned, is geared twofold. I think it's got the commercial imperative whereby the more people actually appreciate the kind of product that's there, clearly the more they will consume it, which will in turn open up a lot of avenues for the filmmaker to be actually able to show his job. And then I think what we've decided as a strategy or as a means really to get this development of audiences is through exhibitions. We need to actually create means, we need to create facilities, we need to create avenues to actually exhibit the particular material. Hey, today is a lucky day, man. Why? Our whole mission with Form is we, we realize, because we've got filmmakers within the movement, we realize what challenges are facing us as young filmmakers because we eventually going to be making African films and they, there's that uh, myth that there's no audience for African films because people are so used to the material that they get from the West. So we see it as a challenge to ourselves to start um, like that whole audience development and not just engaging with people on a dizzy note, engaging with people in a way that you create an audiovisual literate audience, people that can be able to critique the work, to challenge you as a filmmaker. If your community knows enough about what you're doing to be able to challenge you, you also have the space to grow as a creator. Because one day I would also like my films to be watched, so I think I see this as an initiative that I should take to create that audience so that when my program or my project is out, I would know how to get it to the people. Well, I think it is scary for most donors, and especially the idea of film, which is very costly to produce and to make. Maybe we're taking a little side step by supporting distribution, by still saying this is important work and that we want people to support the arts and to support the development of culture. But also because FRU works with organizations. It's not some big fancy American job. They come in and involve communities and to involve particular constituencies, whether it's a film on female genital mutilation, which highlights violence against women and then working with women's organizations, or whether it's working with HIV AIDS organizations promoting those issues. So it's more than just that they've got the films, they also are activists in using the films. One of the problems that we have in terms of xenophobia in South Africa is that it's mainly targeted at African migrants and African foreigners. And a lot of that is because South Africans have no sense of what life is like outside of our borders, especially just north of our borders, where it's seen as a dark continent of war and famine. It's not seen as a continent of people, a continent of cultures and music and, and lives you know, that are continuing. So very racist stereotypes are what we see in mainstream media about Africa. And it's very important that these are counted through alternative images, and only alternative media can do that. You get to a university, you've got student-based structures, be they political, be they social or otherwise, 
And here we try in consultation with the necessary faculties, faculties of arts, faculty of humanities, television and the like, to try and inspire a student-based group, which will then form what is called an African Film Club. And the real task of this particular group would be to organize regular screenings. And us as FRU would facilitate both in terms of the content, the film material that's required, but also to try and engage them with the industry itself. And a lot of students thought of, you know, the first thing that came to their mind when we said, uh, we are taking you out on a, on a cruise to watch African films, they said, oh, are we going to be seeing Cheki China and stuff like that? But you no, know, we said, no, it's going to be African films. And the thing, the, the way they said it, it was like, gosh, African films, do we have talent here and stuff like that? And because, you know, Debo Khomaklatsi, the director of Yusuf Yusuf, was there, and it, it's then that, you know, they, they, they gave uh, interest. <laughs> They bring in filmmakers that have done those films, they interact with the audience. For me, that's a very important process. When I was growing up, cinema or television was what I saw on the screen, was just the actors. I didn't have a sense that you know, it was being, there were people behind the camera, there were scripts that were being written. And what kind of blew my mind was to the extent of how uh, just ordinary people have, have kind of gotten close to that process and how, how aware they are of that process that this is the guy who wrote Yuzo Yuzo, directed Yuzo Yuzo and then interacting with the students and asking me about the colors. Why did you choose that color? Um, why did you move the, you know, why did you cut it that way? That they're, they're so cinematically literate compared to me when I was growing up. Hollywood movies, I would say, are full of fallacies. They are misleading. And African films show how an African has evolved to liberate themselves. Unlike in Hollywood movies where you are saved by, by, by America. America brings money. You, you subject yourself to, to their demands. If one asks our youth about the rest of the continent, uh, the great names like Osman Sambeni, Kwanza, um, Sheikh Sissoko, Jibril Diop Mambeti, will be names that uh, our youth will not be familiar with. And um, this is part of our mission as FRU, to, um, to popularize these great icons and griots of our time. Uh, these are storytellers from the continent who, in the traditional storytelling history of Africa, uh, have a critical role to play. So our concern is not only to give South Africans access to more South African content, but to give them access to content from Africa, Eastern Europe, from Latin America, so that they have other cultural experiences, a richer experience than they currently get, which is a pretty unhealthy dose of American music, American film, American television. FRU have been in existence for many years, and they have both accumulated very substantial content, very significant networks throughout the country. They know how to take this content effectively to communities. So they're absolutely critical in the strategy. Um, there's 500 films, completed works produced on this continent. Hugely entertaining. Um, portraying African people in a positive light, drawing out the, the richness and the goodness uh, of, of our people and, 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 and the continent. We're existing at the moment in a very tragic situation where in order to see as an African film, you have to go to New York, where it's showing in a part of New York Film Festival, you have to go to France. But what FU does is bringing those films into this world and, and exposing us to that culture and, and that cinema, which for me is very important. So I guess they're kind of acting as the role that the big distributors were supposed to do and they're not doing. We were very fortunate in creating an association with FRU during this year. We had the Mambeti uh, retrospective, which consisted of four films by the late uh, director. And to our surprise, I think, we found that actually there was a far bigger audience for these films than we expected. And it was a pleasure to see white and black 
coming to see films by a legendary uh, black filmmaker and actually, uh, you know, enjoying them and appreciating the artistic merit of those films. Due to the success of that little season, which carried on about two or three weeks, we now hope to actually work more closely together with Fru. And the ultimate aim is actually to create a, an African screen at the Labia, to use one of our venues and to concentrate on showing films from Africa by, by Africans. We also have uh, and feel a strong responsibility to broadening the market because certainly in terms of the future of cinema going in South Africa, if you don't, uh, we will die. I mean, you will remain static and uh, you cannot uh, keep increasing prices and keep asking the same people to come more frequently than they already do. But certainly if one looks to the future, you must be looking to broaden your market, otherwise you will not have a business. The From Resource Unit has been very good in understanding the distributor's role. Not all local producers, directors and film units understand it really well. And the one thing that we're very grateful for in terms of our association with FRU is that it has allowed us the opportunity to communicate the needs, the requirements, the guidelines of a distributor and, um, and that they've assisted us in communicating that onwards to the filmmakers. If we have, as an organization, funding and budgets that will allow us to take an African film and release it the way a Jurassic Park is released, to really make a statement, uh, it's, it's then that I think the impact um, um, uh, on the South African audience will be truly realized, that critical mass I referred to earlier. Fru's final contribution to that critical mass is job creation through the training of agents from within communities who will both sell and hire out videos through small business enterprises and continue to engage schools and the adult community in video screenings long after the mobile video education program has moved on. Moss, meanwhile, quietly triumphs over politics and protocol to ensure that the show indeed does go on. We actually exhausted all the possible avenues that we could think of. We spoke to one chief and then that chief told us that now it's a short notice, there's no way that anything can go on. I, tr I tried to speak to a health coordinator in this area and then also she could not actually come for help. And then I spoke to counselors, I spoke to almost everyone that I could think of and then uh, trying to actually resolve the thing. And then eventually then Another thought came to me that, well, what about Shackleland? Is there no way that, well, we can show a film to Shackleland staff? So eventually, the show will go on at Shackleland. The people at FRU, Mike Durham is incredibly committed to the distribution and access of African film, the staff that supports the people, the guys who are running the mobile units out in Pumalanga and in KwaZulu-Natal, you know, it takes a lot of commitment. They had one of their units stolen, you know, but that didn't demoralize people. People kept going back out with the one that they did have. So for me, I also think as well as their administrative skill is their humanity and their willingness and commitment to what they actually are doing. <laughs> if I get actually responses such as this one that we got this evening, it, it really, you know, it, it touches my heart. You know, I'm very humbled by such people. It means that, well, People are hungry for information. So the only, the, only, the only organization that is going to bring this information to them is the Film Resource Unit.